I'm Chef Julia Dunaway, and today I'm going to make it, be making a plant-based comfort food plate. We can call it a blue plate special, but it's not really a blue plate special. But it kind of reminded me of that because it has some key components. And I made this plant-based veggie loaf for Easter, and I have a lot left. And that's what inspired me to make this plate because I started thinking, I didn't use it this way for Easter. I had other side dishes. I thought this would be so good with my Thanksgiving sides, which are my mashed potatoes, which I already made because I've already done a YouTube video on the mashed potatoes. So they're already on there. And it's under, it's called Thanksgiving sides. And then I also made my delicious gravy, which is also a video with the Thanksgiving sides. So the gravy's already made. And, um, because I've already shown you how to make it before. So all of this is made. The only thing that was not on a previous YouTube video that I'm gonna make very quickly are some steamed vegetables. And the reason I chose steamed vegetables was because I always make a lot of steamed vegetables every day, just kind of my daily thing that I have. And it's so easy to make steamed vegetables to have as a side dish. And since I'm trying to eat Lots of cruciferous vegetables. I try to include broccoli or cauliflower. Whatever's in season right now, there's a lot of green beans in the grocery store. I love the color of carrots. And zucchini is great. It's always available. So I'm going to take these few vegetables and show you how quick and easy it is to steam vegetables so you can have them very, very uh, quickly. So I have my steam pot here. And this is already turned on. And this is one of those really inexpensive Rachel Ray pots. I ordered it on Amazon. It's got two sections, one to hold water and one to steam. And it's really handy because it's not very big. It's not like grandma's steam pot that you have to keep in a huge cabinet and it takes up so much room and it's a big pain to get out. I just keep this on my stove all the time because I want to make sure I'm steaming and cooking lots of vegetables. So I'm just going to cut the vegetables in, in rounds like Oh, maybe not even half an inch. Not too thin, because we don't want them to melt away to nothing. But we don't want them too thick either, because they'll take a long time to cook. And what I've found is that vegetables will cook, most all vegetables will cook in five minutes. So I just set my steamer, or I set my timer to five minutes. And in five minutes, I check the vegetables, and pretty much they're always done. It's amazing that it almost always works out that way. So I'm going to just put these in my steamer and, and add my carrots. I have some broccoli that I've already kind of trimmed and cut into florets and the green beans. Now the green beans may take a little bit longer. I'm just going to put a handful in here. So I'm going to try to keep them all in the same spot. That way if the green beans are not done but everything else is done, then I can just, you know, leave the green beans in and get everything else, else out. So I'm going to put that on for five minutes. That water under there is just bubbling away, which is great. And, um, you know, they will be done. But in the meantime, I'm going to start putting together our plate. Because this is a very simple, let's see, I'm, gonna, I'm looking at my watch so I'll remember when it's five minutes. In fact, I think I'll put it on my timer because I'll get to talking. And then I won't remember when it's time, so it's always better to do that. So for the vegetables, we're going to be making a lemon sauce. And that was something that I haven't done before, but I wanted to have that because that really makes this dish really have a little bit of, of uh, brightness, I guess you could say. So I've got cashew cream, and you know cashew cream is nothing more than a cup of cashews that have been soaked with a half a cup of water and um, blitzed in a high, high speed blender. That's all, that's all cashew cream is. There's nothing magical about it. It's just water and raw cashews. And if you're not sure about the raw cashews, I get this type. They're just organic cashews. These are from Costco, but they're unsalted and unroasted trying to kind of stay away from excessive amounts of cashews because they are higher in fat. I've got some lemons that I've washed and I'm just going to use the juice from one lemon to put in this sauce and I have a, oh, here it is. 
I have a little strainer so I could strain out the seeds. I'll just put the lemon juice in here. So it's the, you can add as much lemon juice as you want to this. I like it to be kind of lemony because I want it to be thin and not too, you know, just, I don't want it to be too prominent. So <clears throat> I'm not using, I'm using a lot more lemon than I normally would. I'm just going to pour it through my strainer and it's a whole lemon. So how, however that much is to you, you know, it's uh, probably about three tablespoons of lemon juice. And then I'm going to mix this up. And this is the sauce for my steamed vegetables. And it's going to really make them have a nice little lift. Steamed, steamed vegetables are kind of plain, so it doesn't hurt them to have a little boost. And then uh, what else can I season this with? I found it was good with a teaspoon of nutritional yeast. Doesn't need much. <clears throat> and nutritional yeast is very strong to me. So I'm not a big fan of huge amounts of nutritional yeast. So a teaspoon for this amount of cashew cream and lemon is about right to me. I could probably have used less and I'd be perfectly happy. But a teaspoon is fine. You can just use you know, half a teaspoon if you want. And the other couple ingredients for the sauce, I have some kosher salt. I'm just going to put a pinch in there. And um, this white miso. And miso, this is an American type of miso. And this kind of miso, it, it, even though it looks orange, it's still white. I'm not even going to put a lot in here because this is not a huge recipe of sauce. I'm putting like probably a fourth of a teaspoon of miso in here. Now it seems, my sauce seems a little thick. So I think it could benefit from a little more lemon juice or maybe just a little water because I don't want it to be really thick. I want it to be a little thinner than this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a few drops of water in it. There we go. Just a little. You know, there's nothing simpler than adding a little water to your sauce. Okay, now that's what I, that's the texture I want it to be kind of horrible, you know, and smooth and silky. So there's my sauce for my vegetables. And then let's start creating the plate. So like I said, I have my leftover veggie loaf. And what I like about this veggie loaf is I cook it in this shape where it's very shallow. And what I like about that is it heats up really well in the air fryer and it stays together really well. So it doesn't have, sometimes when you put stuff in the shape of a loaf, it gets kind of soft in the middle. So doing it this way, there are no soft areas. It's all kind of nice and chewy, I guess you could say, which I just kind of like the texture that it, it creates when I do it this way. So I can tell my vegetables are steaming away. They're doing really well. There's my spatula. So I'm going to take my portion of veggie loaf and put it on my plate. And this, this is my comfort food plate. This is the plate that my husband and kids use, these kind of inexpensive Corel plates. And I love the little blue dots on them. I think that makes them look really cute. So I've got my loaf. And I heat the loaf up in the air fryer. I just put it in there um, briefly. Okay, here's our timer. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the, the vegetables and look at them. So the vegetables, to me, they're done. I, I know they're done because I make them all the time. Five minutes is enough time. As soon as they're done, what I do is I transfer them to a big plate. And the reason for that is so they, quit, they don't keep cooking. If you leave them in the steamer, they're going to keep cooking. So I just want to get them out really quickly. So I have my vegetables here. We don't have to plunge them in ice water, especially we're just going to use them right away. And I know they're at the perfect stage of doneness for me because I like them to be a little bit al dente, you know, having a little bit of bite to them. I don't want them to be soft and turn that gray color that vegetables get when they're overcooked. So I kind of like them to retain their green fresh appeal. So that's only five minutes. Then I've got, remember, I've got my beautiful mashed potatoes. I'm going to just pile them up right next to my veggie loaf. 
make a generous amount here. And then I've got plenty of room for my vegetables. Well, I've got some vegetables. I'll just go ahead and use these. I have some that I made earlier over here, but these look pretty. So I'm going to put my broccoli, a couple pieces of broccoli, nice zucchini, the carrots. They make everything look so bright. Bright carrots, a few green beans. And there we go. We have our the start of our plate. But now we have to put the rest of our ingredients. Get this out of here. Burner is still on. <laughs> okay, so we have to get our gravy on here. So remember, I have my gravy heating up. But what I love about this gravy is the Thanksgiving gravy is made with, it, I start with mushrooms and onions and all kinds of aromatics, garlic, and I cook that in broth for quite a while. And then after I've got the, the um, mushrooms and onions and herbs cooking for 15 or 20 minutes, I strain out all the vegetables. You could use them for soup or something. And then I add some vegetable stock to that and put it in a, a pot like this. And then I add some brown rice flour, and that's what thickens it. So it has the consistency of gravy, but it has sage and thyme and rosemary and um, trying to think what else. Um, garlic powder, onion powder. It has all these really good seasonings. Now, if you wanted to, you could put some gravy on your veggie loaf too, but I'm not going to because there's plenty over here. And remember our beautiful sauce. So this is another component of our plate so we can just kind of drizzle the vegetables with this sauce. Remember, it's a lemon, creamy lemon sauce. Okay. And then what we have to do now is, I always like to put a little garnish on everything. So some fresh herbs, and I have an herb garden, and hopefully soon I'll have lots of different fresh herbs. Right now I just have some cilantro. Which I love, but you could use parsley, cilantro, fresh thyme, anything you have, tarragon, you think about spring flavors, but I think um, I love fresh cilantro, especially garden cilantro tends to be a lot milder. I've got a couple of scallions here, green onions, and I think some thinly sliced scallions also taste really good as a garnish, especially on those vegetables. Plus this will make the plate look pretty. So I like it, like it to look good too. And that's what we got. We'll kind of put our, our garnish on here and we'll put some of our fresh scallions. And then last but not least, we could put some lemon zest on the vegetables. This is a freshly washed lemon. And I'm just gonna use my microplane zester And I probably serve this with some red chili flakes. I'm gonna get a fork. And or some candied jalapeno peppers. So then all we have to do is we just dig in with a, a bite of the really good veggie loaf that stays together nicely. And then you know how you like to eat. You dip it in some potatoes with gravy, and then you just take a big bite. Mmm. Such good comfort food. It has all the components that taste like something that, you know, maybe you used to eat a long time ago that you don't eat anymore, but you know, it's whole food, plant-based, no oil, and it still tastes really good. So that and these vegetables, let me take a little bite of a carrot with the lemon sauce. Mm. I really like that too. That just adds another component. So when I eat this for dinner tonight, I'm going to put a little pile of my candied jalapeno peppers on here, and I'm going to sit down and enjoy it. I'll probably put a little, just on the surface, a little fresh ground pepper and a little sea salt. You don't need much. 
and then I'll, I'll enjoy this dish. So if you want to have a comfort food plate and have something that tastes really good, but it's whole food, plant-based, no oil, make this. Remember, the recipes are in Thanksgiving sides, and I will put the link to that YouTube video in the show notes. It's the gravy and the mashed potatoes. The veggie loaf, which is another video I did recently, I'll put the link to that one in the show notes. And then today I showed you how I make everyday steamed vegetables. They're so easy to make. I made the same ones earlier today to make sure I tested the time. And even after sitting here for a few hours, they still look great. They can be eaten hot or cold. They're perfect to take with you as snacks. So it's a good way to get away from eating processed food, steam some vegetables all the time. So follow me by subscribing to my channel. You can follow me on my Facebook page, Chef Julia, Instagram, and uh, I'm going to try to make a weekly recipe. Oh, I also have a TikTok channel. So you can, you can follow me. I'm trying to make a weekly recipe on YouTube. So hopefully we'll come up with something else for next week. So thanks for watching and enjoy your comfort food plate. Bye-bye.